Well, it's been a great start by Keith Knox. Campbell did a bit better in the later half of that round. I wonder what uh, Duke McKenzie, who's held this title in the past, is making of it so far. Duke? Uh, I think Mickey's just not doing enough. He's letting Keith Knox just bully him and dictate the fight, dictate the pace of the fight. You know, Mickey, he really does need to just go out and meet fire with fire and try and pull Knox up in his tracks. And he needs to start winning some rounds because he's falling behind desperately and he's getting to a stage if Knox wins the next couple of rounds, when Mick's going to have to start looking for the knockout for the victory. And it doesn't look like he's going um, to get it. I mean, he's done nothing at the moment to suggest that he can uh, turn the fight around and cause a knockout. So he's really just got to like, try and back, back Knox up and just meet him like, head on in the centre of the ring. So big problems for Mickey Campbell. Campbell in the Campbell is in the blue, Knox in the black. Campbell needs a big round, needs to start to dominate to make it more his kind of fight. Easier said than done, easier to say from here. Yes, well, he finished the last round better by being elusive now. Maybe Knox is just starting to slow down a bit, giving Canwell a little bit more room to get out of position and into position to, to counter. It's certainly he will have gotten a little bit more confidence from the end of the last round. Yes, he has to hope, Canwell, that somehow the storm will subside a little from Knox. Very important from the Scotsman's point of view that he can maintain this tempo, though not get ragged he's started to look a bit ragged on the way in now not so much accuracy or snap from him yes and that's allowing Campbell to get out of the way a little better but still Campbell can't al be allowed to stand on the ropes taking punches like this he's got to try and turn his man he has the boxing ability to do that Campbell just hasn't been mobile enough. His legs aren't getting him away and getting him in positions he needs to be there. That was a good left hook from him. Just starting to look wild and ragged, Knox, in this round. Campbell, for the first time, just starting to stand with Knox in the center of the ring. From Campbell. He's out boxing Knox now, so is this the start of a different phase of the fight? Campbell looking happier now that the tempo has just dropped a notch. Yes, it's just giving him a little bit more time to think about it and get his own punches off. He was obviously very surprised with the speed of Knox early on. And he's making Knox miss there. Yeah, caught with a left hook there on the counter, Knox. There's a danger, I think, with the little Scotsman. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's a danger that he just might have punched himself out. What do you think? Yes, he slowed down a little bit, and he's telegraphing his punches. And that was a good right hand from Campbell there. He's looking very wild and open now, Knox. Yes, he threw that, he threw his own punch, and Campbell just made a miss and caught him with a good right hand. This is Catwell's round, no question about that so far. Easily his best work so far. It was starting to look very, very good before him indeed, but he's won that round. Is it the start of the road back? This is work just beginning to get ragged and Kant will just be beginning to, to catch him with good counters. Here's the right hand, right in the face. All calls on this from Knox. Sixth round. The vacant British Championship in the eight stone division. There have been some terrific fights for this title down the years. And this so far has been an absorbing one with Keith Knox starting like a sprinter but starting to look wild and ragged. He's never been beyond eight rounds as well. So will he tire here? Is the burnout starting? Or was that just an off round for him? Throwing lots of leather, not getting through with much though, Knox, not there. Just beginning to come back a bit, Cantwell. A couple of rounds in it on Glenn McCrory's scorecard. 
And I think that, that must have given Campbell a bit of confidence. He's now more inclined to take the center of the ring and just try and make Knox miss just by a fraction and then land decent counters. Mickey Cantwell as well is fighting for his very career, you feel, here tonight. This promotion is called It's Now or Never. That's not hype. It's about right as far as Cantwell is concerned. He's got to win this fight at 32. Keith Knox there caught Mickey Van, I think, with a left hook. Took it well. He did Mickey take it well, yeah. Well. Didn't flinch there. Mickey Van is a wee bit more than a flyweight. Not much. But again, Knox trying to rush forward, throwing lots of punches. Knox has got to remember to keep his hands up as he rushes forward. Thank you. Dangles his chin in the air. Knox was talking pre-fight about maybe being a wee bit more economical and not burning out all his energy. But there hasn't been too much sign of that. He's just kept on throwing leather, but now the difference is he's not getting through with so much. Campbell's covering up a wee bit better. Walking into punches too, like those two jabs that time, Knox. Again, in this round, Knox still the busier. Campbell caught with a good right hand there. Arm punches from Knox and a hint of the inside of the glove about uh, quite a few of them as well. Slappy kind of punches thrown in a kind of roundhouse way. They will not count. Have to land with a knuckle part of the glove. Cleaner work from Cantwell, even though all the aggression still is from Knox. Yes, he with the right hand there, though, didn't he? He said Knox had to be more economical. He said himself he had to be, and he's not really doing that. He's lots of footwork, lots of hand movement. Well, that was a hard round to score, quite honestly, because Knox walked forward a lot and threw a lot of punches, but not many of them got through. He looked a bit ragged, he was slapping a bit, and I thought maybe just the cleaner work was from Cantwell. So on my scorecard, you might disagree at home, I'm going to give that to Cantwell. What do you think? Yes, ben? I think I would have agreed with you there. There was a lot of wasted work from Knox. He was, you know, the, the arms were going like windmills at times, but you had to count what actually hit, and there were, a lot of punches weren't getting through. Whereas Cantwell, Cantwell's landing with clean shots, and I think won the also landed from Knox, and that was to the referee, Mickey Van. <laughs> Used to be a professional lightweight, Mickey Van. There we are, he's still got the resilience. Still takes yeah, He them. took it well, he just, he just rode that shot a little bit there, you see, just takes the, the sting out of it. <laughs> Seventh round. Good fight. Keith Knox in the black. Shorts, remember the Scotsman from Bonnie Rig. With a proud tradition of Scottish flyweights to live up to here. Cantwell, for whom it's often gone wrong so far in his career on the major occasion, though he did win a Southern Area Championship against Darren Fifield. But he's only had 14 fights. He's had a few hard ones as well. Knox has been standing off at the beginning of this round. You'd think that would suit Cantwell better, but when Knox stands off, Cantwell's got to use the jab. He can't just stand looking. Now we think there may only be half a point in it. Knox still ahead after his whirling dervish style start. The tempo slowed down. That's good work from Campbell. Right and left getting through. Knox just walking into a right hand as well. He's wide open. You'd dread to think what would happen if he came in against a concussive puncher using those tactics. Yes, the defense of Knox is very poor. He gets away with it because he just he comes forward with so much ferocity and he gets past Campbell. And Campbell isn't the biggest of punches, but he leaves himself very much an open target. 
But if he came up against a flyweight puncher in the mold of, say, a Charlie Magri of old, I wouldn't really like to think about the consequences. But to be fair to Knox, he knows that Campbell isn't a big puncher, so he can afford to do that here. Again, he's walking into them, though. And again, Knox trying to look busy, but a lot of his punches are just scuffing punches around the side of the head, not real good scoring punches. Did get through with the right hand, though, just as you said that, Glenn. Always happens when you come. <laughs> The general thrust of the argument, though, is spot on, of course. Knox has just bit, got a bit wild and desperate in the last two or three rounds. Yes, Knox rushing in there, head down, throwing that left hook, couldn't even see. And again, he made the miss there, but I think Carroll is not making him pay for that misses. He's got to try and counter quicker. Yes, there's a suspicion that Cantwell isn't doing quite enough himself. He's doing it on the counter suiting him, I think, now. He seems to have worked Knox out. And this contest has even itself out, and I don't think there's very much in it at this point. No, again, a very hard round of score. I think I would have just given it to Knox, just maybe for the, the extra work rate, but uh, difficult, difficult rounds to score. The cleaner punches are from Canwell, but not really enough of them. A lot more coming from Knox. Well, there's uh, Mrs. Cantwell, and I think that's young Sam, whose name is on uh, Mickey's shorts, along with daughter Amy. And there's the right hand that Knox walked right into. If only Cantwell had a big shot in his armory, that would have had a lot more effect. But he doesn't. Eighth round. First fight, by the way, in eight months for Mickey Cantwell. He's had a back injury. Well, the signs are that Knox is tiring, but really, Cantwell has got to do more. He can't just, he can't just wait. He's got to throw more of his own punches. I think, too, that Cantwell would be relieved that this is not being judged by Americans who really love this walk-forward aggression type stuff, and if any round is even remotely close, they would give it to that style. Counterpunch from Cantwell, cheered to the echo. He's a real little brawler, isn't he, this Scotsman, Keith Knox. Yes, he's a, a tough man to keep away. He constantly attacked, very busy fighter. Yes, busy, brawling, walk forward, aggression again from him. Of course, defensively, he's hardly fought Knox. Again, he's the one that's landing. There's not a lot in them punches, but he's, he is getting through to Mickey Candle. Gotta wonder when this man's gonna start to tire. It's been a strength sapping affair for both of them. Amazing amount of fire being shown by Knox here. Goodness me, this little man wants this championship, and he wants it really badly, and he's fought like a man who wants it so badly, too. Still trying to brawl his way in. Yes, he really is a little terrier, isn't he? Technically, he falls short time and time again, but he just makes up for it just by sheer will, the will to get forward, the will to win. 
Cantwell is finding it very, very hard to subdue, and Knox is still coming forward, and Cantwell hasn't really done much on the counter in this round. Knox looking the stronger man, as we made the point earlier. He is the more natural flyweight. You, I think you'd have to give Knox that round. Duke McKenzie, what about this now? Well, it looks to me like Campbell, he's digging very deep. He's trying very desperately to, to land that punch that he so desperately needs. But Knox's sheer will and the intensity and the ferocity, ferocity, I should say, <laughs> the way he's throwing his punches, it's, uh, you know, it's to be admired, you know? The guy wants to win so bad. But Mick's just not, he's just not doing enough for me anyway. I mean, you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to, like, draw Knox in and, and counter the counter, but Knox is just flying in, and where they land, they land. Sometimes his head's down, but like I say, where the punches land, they land. He's not too bothered. His sheer will to win is, uh, is commendable. Yes, he's almost like a man throwing confetti, isn't he, at the, the bride. A lot of it's going to miss on a windy day, but a few bits are going to hit the target. Yes, and he's certainly getting through with more punches. Ninth round for this British Flyweight Championship. Again, referee Mickey Van wanting a word with him. Not sure what about. What do you think, Glenn? I'm not sure. I think he'll be just saying, listen, lads, keep it clean. It's a good fight. You know, maybe they're tangling up a little bit, getting a little bit wild at times. Knox in front on Glenn's card by three rounds. I've got it just a shade tighter than that myself. You do have the feeling, don't you now, Glenn, that Cantwell has got to go out now and impose himself and seize these rounds if he wants this British Championship at the age of 32. That's right. This could well be his last chance at the championship. He's really, if he wants it, you know, he's been shown the way by Knox. He's been shown how bad Knox wants it. He's got to want it more, and he's got to really try and impose his will and try and push this little terrier back onto the back foot and land some punches. First time that Knox has ever fought a ninth round in his life, this. Whatever Cantwell does, he knows that the next tornado rush is not far away from Knox. And again, Knox comes in. He just hasn't been able to get his boxing together. The rushes have just took him by constant surprise. He can't get his rhythm, can't get his jab going. has resembled a leaf caught in a hurricane. Not all of the work by any means is clean from Knox, but it's non-stop aggression from him. It's obviously very difficult for Campbell because he's been pushed onto the back foot, which means he can't get any sort of balance to counter, can't get set for his own punches. Okay. The, mom the, momentum just, the momentum just carries Knox forward. Knox is back in charge. Cantwell staged a comeback from about the fourth round to the seventh, but Knox is pulling away again now. We think, anyway. Nine rounds gone, three to go for the vacant British flyweight title. Dean Powell in the corner with Mick Williamson in the other corner. The trainer there is George Borden with Dunkey Jar, the cuts man, Benny King. But they're saying you've got to keep the pressure on him. He's just doing that. Yeah, he's doing that. I think they know it's working and they just want their man to keep doing the same thing. It's crude at times, not very technical, but it's working. 
obviously he's pushing Campbell on the back foot. Campbell can't get any work going from there, just not on balance to do that. Again, we see a barrage of punches from Keith Knox. Just sheer work rate is winning this fight. Now on Glenn McCrory's scorecard, you think now, looking at that, that Campbell needs a knockout to win. Yes, I think he's, he's getting himself in a, in a very good lead, no, Knox. I think we all want a two rounds could have been a bit closer, but I'm sure Knox has got a nice lead. This is round 10. Cantwell desperately needs a big finish, even to make this close, you feel. Or to hope that Knox experiences a very, very sudden and dramatic burnout. I think it's what the promoters like to call a crowd-pleasing style <laughs> that Knox has. It's not pleasing Mickey Campbell. Getting some of the work, getting a bit sloppy and rough, and I think he just wants him to clean it up a bit. Tidy up the work. Mickey Van imposing himself on the action. It's better from Campbell, much better jab from him there. Well, it's got to the point, really, you think, with Campbell now that he probably just has to abandon his normal sweet boxing style and just try to brawl it out and out-brawl this fellow Knox if he can. Yes, he's tried to box, he's tried to get himself set, he's tried to jab, he's tried to counter. None of it's worked, none of his normal style has worked. I don't feel now's the time just to say, right, you know, if I'm going to get beat, let's go out and let's have a go. And really just try and push forward. Just try and let his arms go, let them work like this. And the one thing Campbell hasn't done is throwing lots of punches. Just a little bit of a sign of a possible swelling underneath the left eye of Campbell, a minor swelling, nothing more than that. Heads have come dangerously close together at times. And uh, Knox has this way as he's coming in with his head down, but that could be a problem. Well, this has been a lot more negative round. They're constantly getting into the little tangles there, and both of them are missing wildly. And again, Knox blowing up a storm. Body punches are getting in from Knox. He looks the way this is going at the moment is if the British flyweight title is on its way to Scotland. To be more precise, Bonnie Rigg. This it just seems as if Keith Knox is doing it on just, just, just the sheer will to win, sheer aggression. Not a lot of style there, he just wants it and he's going to punch until he drops. Just makes you think what fantastic condition. He must be in, although he took a big countering left hook there from Campbell. That shook him just a little bit, Knox. Head quickly cleared, but he's won that round again. And he's winning this at the moment. It's certainly within reach for Keith Knox, this British flyweight championship. Double the jab and pull the right hand right behind him. Keep yourself tight. Double the jab and right hand right behind him. Pull the left hand through. Double jab, right hand, nice and straight. And rock and roll right after him. You know what up means? Bring your punches up. Bring your fucking right hand up. And you're going to the ropes. <laughs> Again, the work of Knox. The jab pushes Mickey Candwell back. And then just the, the constant aggression. Winning him the rounds. See, big left hook there. And he got through there just because he's thrown so many punches. One was going to land him. The one that did was the best punch so far. The word that springs to mind here as they go into the 11th round. The difference between them really has been fire, hasn't it? Yes, I think fire, desire, all which Keith Knox has shown. Keith Knox in a big, big lead. Five round lead on Glenn's scorecard. A bit less on mine. You can argue maybe about the margin, but there can be no doubt that Keith Knox is dominating this. 
and Mickey Campbell needs a knockout in these last two rounds, I reckon. And that doesn't, to be honest with you, really look like happening. Nice right uppercut from him there. Yes, but again, it just didn't stop the Scotsman. He just keeps pushing forward. Landing with a, a good jab as he wished in there, Keith Knox. They're both very tired now. Counting right from Campbell, crowd on their feet around this Elephant and Castle Leisure Centre in South London. Oh, another left from Campbell. I tell you what, Knox doesn't want to be taking too many of those, even this late. And he'll be giving his corner a few worries here. He rather stumbled across the ring. He's taken a couple of big headshots in this round. Knox, this might not be over yet. Campbell will be lifted by this. Yes, Campbell got through with a couple of good punches there. She seemed to take a little bit out of Knox. Campbell really has to, to try hard now and build on this. Campbell has been this kind of distance before against decent fighters. Knox hasn't. Well, his tank run dry. He's given so much, Keith Knox. He's at the one furlong pole in horse racing terms, but he's not at the post yet. And he catches another right hand from Catwell. This is a bad round for Knox. This wild, open style he has. In this kind of situation, where he's a long way clear on points, it's the kind of style that gives the other guy a chance. Yes, McCannell had a, a couple of chances there and landed with punches. This is Campbell's best round in a long time. But he needs more, much more, like a knockout. There's too often it's just single shots in Campbell. He's got to try and build on that. When he lands once, he's got to try and put in a combination. The defences are often down from knocks as he rushes in. Good punches these now. From Cantwell, there was a right hand followed by two left hooks. He's done all the work that matters in this round, Mickey Cantwell. And though Knox has been shaken, he hasn't been down and he's still there. It's Cantwell's round, but he needs to knock this fellow Keith Knox out, we reckon, to win the fight with only three minutes left. With a straight and a double jab right hand, you can oh, never miss. Oh, Keep the punches straight. Yes, nice that was straight. better from no Campbell. He's not just to get in the fight. He may well have left it a bit too late. He needs to do something very special in the last round. But you see, good counter punching there. The left hook just found the gap. You see Knox with his, his chin in the air. Anybody with a, a bigger punch than Cantwell, you feel, would really take, um, really hurt Knox in them exchanges. Campbell, some good work inside there. In Ricky Campbell's corner, Frank Maloney, the promoter, has got up onto the ring apron to try to urge him on in this last round. Three minutes to go. Mickey Campbell needs to find the punches to stop this fiery Scotsman, Keith Knox, who's put up a tremendous effort here, and we think has a significant points lead going into this last round. Knox, remember, in the black shorts, for those of you who still need the identification. Well, this really has been a terrific fight. Fought at a, a terrific pace. And really, Knox has went for the victory here so well. He's worked throughout this fight. Good contest, right hand from Knox getting through. He knows now that he's so close to the biggest moment in his boxing life, Keith Knox. Cantwell, who's been boxing man and boy since he was 11 years old and still chases the major professional title. We've really got to applaud the fitness of these men. They've worked so hard in this fight. Keith Knox is within sight of taking that Lonsdale belt home to Scotland. Catwell gets through with a left hand, but he needs 
clusters of punches, combinations maybe to really get Knox going. He hasn't done that. Knox is still letting the arms go, trying to punch, but nothing really clean has landed. Campbell with the cleaner shots again. Both of them throwing so much in to this last round. It's a superhuman effort from both fighters. Knox has fought this at about 150 miles an hour throughout. Incredible pace here in the lowest division we have in this country, flyweight. Men built like little jockeys, built for speed. throwing a lot there, but not much of it landed. Just half a minute left now. Half a minute, we think, for Keith Knox to take this British flyweight championship and take it back north of the border. Conwell gets through with some good punches. But time now looks to be on the side of Keith Knox. The bell will go any second. Referee Mickey Van will decide. There goes that bell. And Campbell has been given it. Campbell has been given it. Wow. That is extraordinary. Keith Knox kicks the ring rope in protest. He's furious, and I must say, that's taken us by surprise. That has taken us by surprise because we felt that Keith Knox, with his non-stop aggression, had won that fight. But they've given it to Mickey Campbell, and that has got a pretty mixed reception around here. Obviously, the Campbell fans are celebrating. Now, I'd be the last one to deny Mickey Campbell anything. He's a guy who deserves to lift a British championship, but I honestly have to say, I don't think he won that fight. No, I would certainly agree with you. I thought Keith Knox had won it by three rounds. Just certainly, it was a good finish from Campbell in the last couple of rounds, but I just had him by a three-point winner. Three rounds for, for Keith Knox. I had it, and I think he'll be absolutely devastated by that result.